Well, I have, you know, listened to the conversations in the room and they've not been too nice from a few people. And then other people, it's been, you know, very nice. Um, since we started this service, the Platinum Service Group, certain people have returns of over 100%. Other people aren't even close to that. They're like very low percentages. The average range is uh, in the 20 something, but it really is a skew because um, of uh, certain people following, you know, what I do exactly and having both accounts, both the BitMEX and the Coinbase. Um, but at the same time, the Coinbase didn't come online until just so many months ago. And there have been people that have been at a disadvantage, as well as their own self-destructive behavior, honestly. They don't tell you about that part. They want to blame somebody else. Um, but that's their na natural psychology. A lot of the issues that they have are themselves. Um, but let's focus on the service itself and talk about um, some of the things that we could change here. We could make the price lower uh, to make it fit for certain people. There are some people on this group that are just trading a couple Bitcoin. That's like nothing. Uh, that's very low of amount to actually, this is actually designed for people with larger amounts of funds. And then there's other people on this that you don't hear from, they're never in the chat room. They're trading much larger funds. Um, I'm not gonna go over and out anybody or tell anybody who those people are. And, that's fine, that's their own business. It makes no difference. My technical analysis, if you could find better, God bless you. Um, I've looked at all the people and I doubt, you know, uh, I, I would say nine out of 10 people that are signal providers don't even make money trading, um, to be honest with you. Uh, but I'm one of the people that can prove it. You can audit my live accounts and you could see, I could show you them backwards and forwards. You could see the amounts of um, that I make, but we're at a severe disadvantage with this Cornex bot because you miss uh, two thirds or more of the uh, way beyond, probably even much higher. I haven't even calculated, but you miss the profitability of my trades by a great deal, and that's because of the fact that the Cornex bot is very. Uh, I can't trade Bitmex and and Coinbase and other exchanges at the same time that I'm using this Cornex bot effectively. So I'm at a very limited, you know, and people think it's easy. It's not. Uh, sometimes when trading opportunities present themselves in certain ranges, you have to be able to act quickly, and I'm not able to do that with the, the bot. Um, but we're going to try to find a way to structure this correctly, and there are people that have done very well, and there are people that um, haven't. And uh, there's a mix as to whose problem. It could be with between the, the keyboard and the, the chair, where the problem lies, um, but I don't want to get into that. Let's go over and discuss some of the issues that we have here. For example, let's take a look at the Cornex bot and see how difficult it is to actually make a trade. I am showing you the Cornex bot and the problems that we have with it. Besides the execution problems, I'm going to show you how difficult it is to actually enter a trade. Say that I decide I want to make a trade. I have to first do this. Go to Signals, and then I have to go over and Publish, and then I have to choose Guided or Free Text. I always use Free Text because it's faster, and then I have to go over and decide what I'm going to do. So I have to copy and paste a whole, you know, uh, thing. So let's do that. Let's say that I want to go over and buy Bitcoin. So I have to type in all of this. This I'm just copying and pasting to make it to show you. Um, you know, first what it is, the exchange, and the, the levels and so forth. Say I want to buy 6,400. And I have to type it in, and then I have to choose target. Let's say that I want to do 72, 7,600, what we currently have. And I can go over a comma and do 7,700 as well. So boom, then it goes over and asks me to choose your entry percentage. And I'm gonna say trailing entry percentage, which is basically trailing stop. Uh, choose trailing take profit. We're gonna do without, uh, without. So you see all the things and the steps I'm doing. Then I have to choose the actual percentage of the trade that I want. So I wanna say 5%. 
And then from here, uh, do you want to include ratios? Yes. And then from here, see if confirm. And then I have to choose what channel it goes to. This is long, so we want to go over and make sure it goes to this long. And then right away uh, to choose this right here. And then if I wanted to edit the signal, like if I do signals to edit and so forth, do you see how long that takes? This is way different than a few clicks from uh, BitMEX that I would make, you know, instantaneous. I do hundreds of trades a week, okay? And I can't do those type of trades because they happen very quickly and I'm playing very short-term reigns. There's no way to do it with the, the Cornex bot. This is complete garbage. Uh, it's like I'm doing command line back in the day. This is, you know, uh, it's not usable. And um, it doesn't even work when I actually make certain trades. There are issues with it always, and there always have been. And we just recently had the um, Coinbase the past so many months. We finally got Coinbase to do this. So you had both the long and the, you know, so we're at a disadvantage. I'm missing a great many profit opportunities that limit my trading abilities because of the fact that I don't really have any control. So this is a very poor solution and it's not worked out well for us. I do not disagree with the complaints in the room and this is the primary cause. Uh, this is not useful and there are just too many programming issues. It's poorly programmed. You have to do it through Telegram. It's, it's garbage to put it short and simple. But that's been the main issue. So at least now you understand and you can see the complexity of having to enter an order uh, in compared to a few clicks. I can enter a whole list of, of trades on BitMEX in a ladder in a matter of seconds. Or this, this takes me minutes, which this costs you money is basically what I'm saying. So at least now you have understanding of the, the issues that we face with using this Cornex bot uh, through Telegram. Now, as you can see, that took way too long to do. And uh, there are many parts to it that take even longer, depending on how you're doing. And when, when the market's moving or, uh, you know, it, it just, it's too time consuming for me to do, be doing both the BitMEX and the other exchanges and this at the same time. It's just, it's not very feasible. And the other thing is that there's a lot of issues within the Cornex box where things just don't replicate correctly on the, the trades. So the programmers just do a really shit job, and I'm sorry, but uh, they suck uh, is the only way to put it. And uh, this Telegram solution just doesn't work. Um, we can find uh, some solutions. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is the only thing that was presented to me as being, you know, our only option. So I don't know where to go from here on that, and I'll have to talk to Evo and uh, find out what we want to do with it and, and get feedback from you guys what you would like to do um, and how we can make the service usable for you or you know and whatnot but we have to do it where it's economically viable I'm not gonna do this uh, right now I mean the amount of money that we get from this is not worth my time and honestly I would just say forget about it and just you know go back to trading for myself um, I'm perfectly happy with um, than to deal with this. Um, but uh, if you guys, you know, I, I know that you like my technical analysis, you like my trading, and I wouldn't want to deprive you of that, but it has to be, you know, I, we'll have to find a solution. And if not, we'll just basically kill it. Um, uh, you know, uh, but we have to do it within a short time because uh, the membership is restarting in uh, January, February time frame, I believe it is. So we're going to have to decide quickly and uh, go from there. Other than that, you know, uh, let's go on to the, the video of uh, the actual technical analysis and go from there. And I do hope you guys have a happy holidays and I'll talk to you later. Market update and a happy holidays. I'm going to be traveling and away and being pulled on by different family members in the coming uh week or so, so I might not be around as much. Do you keep that in mind with uh, Christmas and the New Year coming up? Um, it's going to be busy for me. So if I don't respond quickly, eh, that's going to mainly be why. Uh, but I will always be around. You know, I'm always connected in one way or another. Um, so there just might be a lag. Uh, but other than that, let's get to the marketplace. And I want to show you and, and bring you some positivity uh, for what is going on. 
Now the Bitfinex whales, in my opinion, are stuck. And they're not able to really get out of the marketplace. Anytime they try, they cause big pumps up to the, the market. There's no liquidity for them to any degree. But, you know, they have done a good job and they've scared people. But I don't think they're getting enough of their shorts filled. Um, so there's plenty of upside that can occur. And uh, this spike right here, you think that is nice, is probably very little. Uh, the 60, you know, uh, 7,600, 77, that area right in there, and maybe even above here, uh, looks very likely and probable that we're going to hit it. We might get a small pullback to um, under 69, maybe even 6,700. But from there, again, they're going to be looking to buy because they want out of their shorts. And I think they have a lot of inventory to clear. So they're stuck. And that's not good for them, in my opinion. Um, now, uh, that's why you've seen strange things like them, the longs on the, the Bitfinex platform. That, that's an indicator, by the way. Uh, you know, uh, they're looking for different avenues of which to, uh, you know, hedge against their, their shorts and whatnot. Uh, so what, what do you do from this here? Uh, now, as you know, I talked about dual geometries and going all the way back from 2017, seems like forever but we have a dual geometry here now you could call them what you like you call them bats bear i mean uh, butterflies five o sharks all kinds of interesting crab you know names for these patterns i just call them m's and w's uh, there's mathematically many variables that go along with it you can't just look at the geometries and say oh this pattern is going to reverse and whatnot there has to be things that go along with it in terms of volume and um magnitude, impulses, uh, small little fractals that you don't see going on, they all add to the picture. And, or if you remember, it gives you a multiverse of variables of what should we have to use. Because a pattern could break down, um, just like this inverted head and shoulders kind of broke down, uh, never really got the, the full range on it because it was, uh, it was missing certain parts. So that brought down its probabilities. And everything that we do, is probabilistic. So from, you know, uh, short term to the long term, things are dynamically moving up and down. And it's a matter of probabilities. There is no certainty. And all we can do is observe what happens most often, um, plan and execute. That is it. Those are the three things that I always tell you about. Well, we've got a good plan and we've executed and we're mostly to the long side now. And the first target we're looking at is going to be above that 7,600. And then going all the way back to the mid, you know, uh, 9,000 range. That's what's there. And we could, if those Bitfinex whales really get crushed and they become impatient and they want to get out of the marketplace, they could push it all the way above this nine, you know, upper to mid 9,000 range and take it even above here because if they get trapped in that, and you know, there's enough momentum, they're going to be maybe panicking a little bit. Not too much, but I, I, I can't say. We'll see. Um, but there is a probability that that can go against them and they can get kind of, you know, screwed in a way. They have to take that into account. And when you see strange things like, uh, a large number of longs appearing on the Bitfinex platform and stuff. Those could be clues. So we have to keep that in mind. So everything is shaping and looking good. Uh, I would look for the 7600 and then um, maybe some exaggeration to the upside. That would be proving a lot of what I'm saying. So it's it's mostly bullish out there. And statistically, there are many in, you know clues that give us this uh, bullish side. And to the downside, I wouldn't expect much uh, under that 6,700, maybe 67, you know, 66 at the very lowest, but not likely uh, to last long. And boom, you can get a spike right back up there. So it looks very bullish right now. Other than that, that's the update. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys have a happy holidays, and I will talk to you soon.